as I begin this piece, allow me to start with a disclaimer. I will not adjust this issue solely through the lenses of my cultural paradigm, one that more times than often tends to adjust social issues as if white and black are the only two races that exist. As if African Americans are the only people in history who have experienced oppression and as if racism, prejudice, and discrimination are the problems and not just symptoms of the disease. Brothers and sisters, I am obliged to be the doctor's prescribed prick in my people's pointer by passionately presenting my premise and my premise is this. You see, I've noticed that when it comes to matters of social injustice, we so narrow-mindedly focus on skin color that our thoughts, words, and actions in response to the situations are more dangerously emotive than biblically directed. Resulting with pastors preaching political propaganda from the pulpit instead of presenting present problems from the perspective of scriptural precepts. Producing Protestants who, by product of the poison, is preaching pompously prod at the preeminence of God. As if he owes the skeptic an audience. Beloved, what we haven't realized is that when we choose to depend on ourselves alone to fix matters such as racism, prejudice, discrimination, and police brutality, we're giving headache medicine to someone who has the flu, curing the symptom but not the sickness. And if we as Christians are to approach this issue, let us approach it biblically by understanding that the symptom is social injustice but the sickness is sin. So if it is sin that is the sickness, then we as Christians need to understand that the true enemy is the ventriloquist and not the dummy. That true slavery is not slavery to the system, but slavery to sin. And that we may discriminate against one another, but sin and Satan have no prejudice. And he will use everything from the ignorant racist to the overly zealous ethnocentric Christian to cause confusion and strife among the people of God. So in times like these, it is imperative that we understand that the solution is not sanction, it's salvation. That we can impose laws and acts upon a man's morality, but only God can establish his kingdom upon a man's heart. That we can tell a man that he is free, but only God can break the chains. That if it is sin that is the problem, then it's the gospel that must be proclaimed because you can be freed from social injustice and in your heart still be enslaved because it's beautiful to be black, but it's miraculous to be saved. The root of, of social injustice says there is enmity between you and I because I believe that my ways are better than yours. And at the heart of sin, there is enmity between us and God because we believe that our ways are better than his. And I am simply astonished at how passionately we attack sin when it is us who are not receiving it. I am amazed at how quickly we withhold grace from those who need it when we receive much grace and we don't deserve it. Brothers and sisters, this isn't a rebuke but a plea that we fight the true problem with the true answer, that we fight sin with salvation, and that we be confident that our present sufferings pale in comparison to the glory that will be revealed in all who have called upon Christ to free them from sin of any and all kind. So finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to stand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Let freedom ring. Money, pride, and security will lend summer to a fistful of fear. They will melt and burn the brick all churches from the inside out. Fill the pulpits with pastors more concerned with keeping their wrists free from prisons, the taxes and ties. So we know that you guys enjoy the content that we produce. We enjoy giving it to you. If you want to be a part of that process, if you want to be a part of allowing us to continue to give you that content with a bunch of ideas that we have, 
there's ideas upon ideas that we have ready to go, ready to produce. If you want to be a part of making that happen, become a patron.